What's up, y'all? Welcome to a new video. Today we're going to be doing a versus um, iPhone 12 versus a Nikon D3500 camera test. Um, I'm using the iPhone to record, um, so I can't actually show it to you. Um, so yeah, the D3500, let's run through the specs. It has a 24.78 megapixel sensor. It shoots in three by two aspect ratio. No image stabilization. Um, it can do 1080p 30fps recording for up to 30 minutes. And if you buy the uh, kit lens that it comes with that has variable aperture um, and it has a 0.38x magnification or zoom um, and you can also buy it for about $496.95 so $500. The iPhone 12 um, comes with dual megapixel 12 dual 12 megapixel cameras um, a wide and an ultra wide. Um, the ultra wide is 2.4 aperture and the wide is 1.6. Um, and the wide also does have optical image stabilization, which is important and we'll get to that soon. Um, it also comes with two times optical zoom and five times digital zoom and can do 4K 60 FPS recording for an unlimited amount of time until your battery dies or you run out of storage. And it also has Dolby Vision HDR, which is not to get confused with HDR 10, which is a different standard of HDR which a lot of phones uh, can do right now. But Dolby Vision HDR is a different standard of HDR that only the iPhone 12 series can do um, for now, um, which is actually fantastic. That's something um, that makes these videos look super crisp, makes them look vibrant and the colors just look amazing. Um, but it can only do it at 4K 30 FPS for now. Um, and it's the only smartphone to be able to do that. So. Those are the specs. Um, and just off the top, when it comes to cameras, the most noticeable, noticeable thing that the Nikon D3500 has over the iPhone 12 is a removable lens. And you can pretty much shoot in a different, tons of different shooting styles, you know? Um, but with an iPhone, you come with fixed lenses. Um, so you're basically stuck with a wide or an ultra wide. And if you step up to the 12 pro or 12 pro max, you get a telephoto lens, which, um, I be believe like very few people actually take advantage of it. So you're really not getting much there. Um, but you're kind of stuck with the lenses and what you have. Um, and that's kind of why the fact that it has the two times optical zoom is actually something really like good and digital zoom, even though it does go up to five times gets extremely extremely bad in terms of quality um, it starts to compress and it gets really grainy and noisy the more you zoom in past two times the kit lens that comes on it only has a uh, as far as the nikon goes only has 0.38 times zoom but there's tons of lenses that can do you know ridiculous amounts of zoom but then you also got to pay for them and lenses are extremely expensive um so i mean you know you can buy a lens that costs as much as the camera, even more. Um, so now you're looking at thousand dollars plus in terms of, you know, how much it would cost to do certain types of photography. Um, and it's only a camera, at least with a smartphone, you get, you know, the actual smartphone, not just a camera. You get to do other things on it, right? So I took some pictures, the iPhone 12 on the left and the Nikon D3500 on the right. Um, and just off the bat, the iPhone 12 picture looks way brighter. The sky is a lot bluer um, and it also looks sharper. And on the right, we've got the Nikon. It's darker. Um, the sky is a lot more of a lighter shade of blue and it actually looks less sharp. Like there's a lot of blurriness going to it. Um, but on the left one, the iPhone 12 is flexing into HDR. Um, and making this look way better than it should. And on the Nikon side, even though it is blurrier or seems to be, I think what's happening here is that because it's an overall darker image, this picture has a lot of darker toned colors, you know, the browns and greens. So they're starting to kind of mush together just because the brightness of this picture isn't that high. Which leads me to my next point is that when you're taking pictures with a you know full uh, DSLR or mirrorless camera, it leaves you a ton of room to make adjustments to edit these photos and make them look uh, you know way way better. But with an iPhone, yes, 
um, you can, you know, download a third party app and shoot raw pictures. Um, but if you're shooting to the regular camera app, like a majority of people do, um, there really isn't no room. It does all the processing for you and there's very little room to make any, you know, meaningful adjustments. So for people who are looking to just, you know, point and shoot, take a picture and post it, that's where the iPhone really shines. Um, but those people who are looking to get more into the photography space, you know, make edits to their photos and, you know, overall make, you know, more meaningful and significant changes. I think the picture on the right has the potential to look um, even better than the one on the left. All right. Okay. So it gets a bit more interesting now. Um, so this is a picture of my car. And on the left, on the iPhone side, one, there's a glare. So that's already, you know, a strike. And then two, if you look at the back and all the green trees and stuff, yes, they're brighter, but they look way more washed out. Um, overall, the picture looks very washed out. And this is where the fact that it's brighter kind of, yeah, you know, knocks some points off. On the right side, it's a lot more true to life. Um, I took this picture around four to five and it's also December now. So the sun tends to go um, down around that time. So this makes more sense on the right side. It's more realistic as to the time I took this picture. Also, um, because of the bright effect, you can actually see a lot more of the inside of my car on the iPhone picture versus the right side and my windshield isn't tinted. Um, so that's actually very interesting. Um, but again, that's just because of the fact that this picture is just brighter. And then also on the Nikon side, it's a lot more uh, sharper. Um, I think the details are a lot more easy to pick out, um, which is actually very interesting because like I said on the last picture um, in the landscape one, even though the iPhone looked like it was sharper, I think it was the fact that it was a brighter image and in that exact scenario that was making it look like it was sharper. Um, but in this case, um, the DSLR um, definitely flexes its muscles a little bit more. So here's a video I took on the Nikon D3500. Um, and this is from the review I, t I did. And if you've seen that video, same thing here. This camera is not meant for video. It's a photography first camera. As you can tell um, by this clip, it's super soft. Um, it's um, can't really distinguish many like facial features. Everything kind of just looks like a blob. Um, it doesn't do well with light. I'm actually in a pretty bright room, um, but it looks way darker than it really is. Um, and then in terms of audio, you're, I didn't uh, have the audio playing, but I mean, it's a built-in microphone, so they're not great. Um, so this is definitely um, a horrible camera for video. So this is a video um, that I took on the iPhone 12. Um, and if you've seen the review for that uh, smartphone, then you know what I'm gonna say. The iPhone 12 is the king of video um, for any smartphone whatsoever. And it's significantly better than the video given on the Nikon D3500. One, it's stabilized. Um, that's already a huge thing um, for the average consumer. Two, you know, HDR video, it looks great. Um, and I can't get over how stabilized this is. I'm walking around um, and it, no jitter whatsoever. Um, and I'm not having audio playing, but the audio is much better. But then again, if you're looking to do anything serious, I would recommend getting an external microphone. Um, it's a lot sharper, way clearer. You can kind of decipher all my facial features and stuff like that. So in conclusion, which one would I pick? It depends. Um, you're probably expecting that. Um, so if you're looking to do a lot more editing, you want to get deeper into photography and you want your pictures to look their absolute best, I would go with a, the Nikon D3500 or a DSLR camera. And you know, this also comes with things like modularity. You know, you can, you like messing around with cameras and stuff like that. I feel like this is more for people who are want to get deeper into the pictures they take and want to get the absolute best picture possible, right? But if you're someone who wants to, you know, take a picture, post it online. Um, you know, you don't want to do too much editing. You just want the best picture possible um, within the first, you know, five seconds of taking it. And you also plan to do video. Um, 
I would definitely recommend you go for the iPhone 12. And that's not to say that DSLRs can't do video because believe me, they can. This specific camera is not suited for video, but I mean, you can get yourself a Canon 70D used um, and that camera can do fantastic video. So if you're looking to do a lot more video and you want to get the absolute best video quality, then obviously you can spring for those. But then again, you're getting to very, very high price ranges. All right, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you know I made it easier on finding out whether or not you should you know, invest in a full camera or you know, maybe uh, upgrade to the iPhone 12. And if you already have it, should you stick with it? Um, I'll have the links to this camera as well as the iPhone in the description if you want to purchase those. Um, follow me on social media to get updates on you know new videos and things like that. And I'll talk to you guys later.